Hello, my name is uh, Bilal Sukkar. In this video, I'm going to cover the point of adoption model. This model is published in collaboration with uh, Dr. Mohammed Qasim from Teesside University in the UK. To understand uh, and benefit from this model, there's a bit of background research that need to be read and understood. I'll summarize this uh, in this slide. We've got uh, the capability stages model, uh, which is included in the point of adoption. We've got also capability steps, and we've got maturity levels. There is a, a video covering each of these concepts. I strongly encourage you to review these videos. But briefly, the capability stages concept or model refers to a series of milestones separating pre-BIM to post-BIM. Um, these include uh, object-based modeling, model-based collaboration, and network-based integration. Capability steps really refer to the steps separating these stages. And they are of different types. There are technology steps, there are process steps, there are policy steps. For example, there are within technology step types, there are software steps, there are hardware and network steps. And these steps are explained in the video, if you can follow the link. Thirdly, the maturity levels or the maturity index concept model refers to the gradual improvement in quality within these uh, capability stages. So if capability stages refer to the minimum ability to do something, so the minimum ability to model or the minimum ability to collaborate, maturity levels refer to the increase in quality, repeatability, and predictability within these abilities. So please refer to these models in order to fully understand the point of adoption model. When we're discussing point of adoption and this model, we are trying to do the following things. We are trying to clarify the path towards implementation and diffusion so within a specific organization, so we are looking at adoption of them within an organization or across organizations. And we're trying to clarify the path moving from before adopting them through adoption to the diffusion of them within an organization or across organizations. Also trying to demonstrate how do you measure this increase or change in organizational BIM ability uh, using BIM, because BIM is, as we all know, is not something like just adoption of a tool. It, it includes adoption of tools, the processes, standards, policies, etc. So this point of adoption model aims to demonstrate how to measure these changes in uh, performance using BIM. It also the model tries to combine different performance metrics. There are certain performance models which measure only ability or only measure diffusion or only measure maturity or readiness. However, the point of adoption model tries to, to combine all these concepts in a single model that hopefully explains uh, the relationship between these concepts and provides a clear picture of performance within an organization or across different organizations. So what is adoption? So when we say point of adoption model, what is adoption? Really, what does the term adoption mean? It means, what does it mean? And what are we adopting? And what is meant by point of adoption? So when we're discussing adoption, uh, semantically, it, you know, it means something specific. But in, in this model, it refers to three concepts. We are discussing readiness, so getting ready to adopt getting ready to implement BIM, getting ready to increase our capability. It also looks at implementation, which is the actual um, increase in capability and maturity uh, within an organization. And thirdly, is a diffusion of these abilities uh, within an organization or across organizations. So really getting ready, implementing, and then the diffusion of the ability which we've acquired through implementation. 
So what are you adopting? We could be adopting practices, new practices, we could be adopting laws, new laws, or innovations. So when we're discussing the point of adoption model, we are focusing on uh, innovations. And the reason for that is, is that uh, we consider BIM as the current expression of construction and thus innovation. So currently, if we are discussing innovation within the construction industry, it revolves about modeling, it revolves around big data, it revolves around collaboration and integration. So currently, BIM is the expression of construction industry innovation. In the future, there will be other terms which represent the current expression of construction industry innovation. And what is the point of adoption? Now, we identify the specific point, which is uh, it's like a milestone, a reliance separating readiness. So we are ready, we are getting ready to adopt. With, there's a point separating this readiness to, from implementation and diffusion. I'll explain this a little bit better in, in the few slides uh, coming. Let's look at the model. So the model has two axes. On uh, the y axis, there's the performance. So going from the bottom from pre-BIM to post-BIM. So going up is an increase in performance. And on the x-axis is time or relative time, um, which of course uh, represents um, the increase or gradual increase or dramatic increase in performance from a point in time moving forward. So it doesn't really look at, uh, it's not really absolute time, meaning the representation you're gonna see does not really tell you how many weeks, or how many months, or how many years separating one point from another. It just gives you a relative understanding of a relationship uh, between these different uh, performance milestones. The first uh, we're going to look at is, is moving from pre-BIM to stage one. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and we'll look at this model and we'll see again the performance on the y-axis and time, relative time on the x-axis. We've got capability stage one, which is object-based modeling. And we've got the first point of adoption. Now, what this part of the point of adoption was showing us, that to go from pre-BIM to capability stage one, we have to do things over time. These things that prepare us to adopt. So, for example, if we want to adopt BIM, which is object-based modeling, stage one, as defined in previous uh, research, we need to uh, you know, compare software tools, we need to acquire software tools. We need to get ready, perform training, upgrade um, hardware, etc. In and all, in order to prepare ourselves, to ready ourselves to adopting them. But when we make the decision to adopt them, and we actually implement them uh, software tools and workflows on the live project, we consider that to be the first point of adoption. So really, adopting them at the point of adoption means getting ready and then adopting them on a live project. And here we see that readiness is, is shown as a ramp. So really, when you are getting ready, it is an additive process. You are learning new uh, software. You are improving maybe the, uh, uh, the hardware specifications that you're using. Uh, you are studying standards and protocols. And then when you adopt them, it's quite a capability jump from no modeling to object-based modeling, or from 3D CAD-based modeling to object-based data-rich, information-rich modeling. It's, if, if we want to understand this capability jump, maybe we, we take an example from outside uh, construction industry, for example, Let's say we want to launch a spacecraft into space. We first um, do all the research needed. We, we you know, prepare the, the hardware needed. We prepare the software needed. We train the astronauts, etc. But at, with all these readiness activities, we have not really gone into space or haven't really acquired the ability to go into space. Only when we launch that spacecraft into space, we do acquire that ability. Doesn't mean that uh, uh, you know ability to send that spacecraft into, into space 
you know, would provide all the results that we need or would, you know, would be at highest quality possible, you know, the mission would be of highest quality. But it means that once we launch, when we really uh, have, have benefit from all this readiness in order to, um, you know, perform the, 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 the scalability jump, it means that we have additively increased our abilities until a point where we, we do acquire that ability. And this is represented as a capability jump. And in BIM sense, we've made ourselves ready, our company ready, we've trained our staff, but we don't really have a BIM ability yet, only when we adopt, uh, you know, when we uh, implement BIM on a live project, we have really adopted. This is what's considered to be the point of adoption. Now, point of adoption is the point where there was before no capability and now we have capability. It doesn't mean that this capability is great or will provide high maturity or you know high quality deliverables in order to to you know increase our abilities in the quality, the repeatability, and predictability or availability, we need to introduce the third concept, which is maturity. So really after readiness. A capability jump now we need a maturity uh, increase in our performance and he's referred to the video covering maturity levels in order to understand this gradual increase in maturity but uh, there are in, in maturity levels we've got five of them we've got the first one is called initial the second one is called defined then managed integrated and optimized I won't be covering these in detail um, in this video. Please refer to the maturity levels video. But if we look at the point of adoption model, we can see here now that from pre-BIM, there is a readiness ramp up to a point where we actually adopt, which is a, a quite a capability jump. And then there is a gradual maturity climb along something called an S-curve. Uh, this is a well-researched and uh, well-defined now uh, explanation of how the you know, performance uh, increases or how the implementation diffuses within a population. Zooming out now and we look at stage two. So again, there is another ramp, another capability jump to stage two, and there is the maturity climb for stage two as well. For stage three, again, we've got a readiness ramp, a capability jump, a third point of adoption, and then another maturity climb for that stage. Now, when we're looking at these maturity climbs, we are looking at the average curve because when we are increasing our uh, maturity, so we're increasing our quality, we're really increasing lots of things. So, for example, we are increasing the quality of our training, we are increasing the quality of our deliverables, we may be increasing uh, the, uh, the predictability of our um, you know, deliverables. So really this maturity climb be represented in the point of adoption model is a nominal average of all the changes in our maturity. So really if, if you look at these maturity climbs, you could have maybe three of these climbs or maybe 10, depending on what you're measuring. And quickly, just to show you an example of how this um, point of adoption model is useful in measurement. If we trying to measure the capability maturity of an organization, we may notice that if an organization has, let's say three different branches, for example, a branch in Melbourne, a branch in Sydney, and one in New York. You could, the different, you know, different branches may have different capability maturity. This point of adoption model allows the measurement of these different capabilities within the same model. So you could have a branch uh, at 1C, which is uh, modeling integrated. So capability is modeling, maturity is integrated, which is quite good at modeling. Uh, but another branch would be at higher level of 
capability maturity, they could get collaboration defined, while the third one have just started to integrate uh, their um, in, in interdisciplinary um, type environment, um, integrating all their technologies, processes, and policies using all the servers or, or, as, or as such. So this model here shows the ability to uh, first identify the point of adoption at each stage. So we've got a point of ado adoption for stage one for modeling, another one for stage two collaboration, a third for integration, and also identifies the ramps, the readiness ramps, where we can also measure uh, at what point in the ramp an organization is. And it also identifies uh, the capability jumps and the maturity or diffusion curves. Hope you found this video useful. In order to fully understand um, this model, please refer back to the capability stages, maturity levels, and capability steps videos. And there's also, if you're interested in reading the full research, please refer to uh, by following the link here reading the journal paper microbiome adoption conceptual structures and please remember to subscribe thank you